name is Don Finchett. I'm with Business Industrial Network. Uh, we specialize in Allen Bradley PLC training. Although someone uh, asked a question earlier already, that uh, does this uh, training cover other PLCs? There will be a lot of information, a lot of procedures and techniques that can be applied to any PLC. So, I've been working with uh, Business Industrial Network for 12 years. Uh, we've been doing these seminars for PLC troubleshooting for seven years, and I've been in the industry training, set up training programs worldwide for uh, 20 plus years. We'll just say. <laughs> Business Industrial Network uh, is partnered with other companies, so you may see throughout your manuals uh, the name of a company called Industrial Training Incorporated. They're out in Atlanta, Georgia, which is another one of our home bases. And uh, they offer all the other training, uh, mechanical training, hydraulics, welding, even uh, high voltage training, neck training, and things like that, too. But our company, Business Industrial Network, specializes in Alabama. We do an advanced uh, training program for PLCs, RSU, and we've got a lot for 2008. We've got a lot more training programs coming up. Rockwell Software and Allen Bradley, uh, they're two different companies. Allen Bradley made the hardware, Rockwell made the software. Over the years, they merged together and became one company. For this uh, training here, we're going to do troubleshooting with our Logics Industrial Programming Language. Our goal is to teach you how to troubleshoot, do it safely, reliably, and uh, with minimized downtime, and which sets us apart from other training programs. The difference between our training is that as we deliver it, we're trying to deliver to you the best way to do things, and only the knowledge that you'll use. We've skimmed over and we've said, what can we fit in there? What's the most valuable knowledge, the most used knowledge? We surveyed all our technicians and, and uh, past customers over the last 12 years to fine tune this course to give you the most valuable knowledge you can give you. Starting off with the basic use of RSLogix 5 and RSLogix 500. RSLogix 5 and 500 is the software that your laptop uses to access the PLC program. We'll be primarily using RSLogix 500, which is the software that Helen Bradley sells to work with the Slate 500, the MicroLogix, I'll show you MicroLogix in case you guys don't know. <clears throat> this here is a MicroLogix PLC, and, uh, and it also works with the, uh, the fixed unit, but primarily Slate 500 and the MicroLogix. This here is the Slate 500. It's a fixed unit or a block or a brick unit. There are several different terminologies to refer to it. But the same thing as this, but it's a lower grade. It's, it's a less expensive, slower process with less cable. So this is this is their first generation, first one they did. And then they said, hey, let's make it modular and it'd be less downtime. We can troubleshoot and replace parts. This one here has no replacement parts. So is that no, it's not obsolete because, oh yeah, plenty of them. Actually, there's one more PLC for the RSLogix uh, 5 up here. There's, this one here is kind of heavy. It's, it's a dinosaur. It's about 30 pounds. <laughs> this here is called PLC 5. And this was their very first generation. Not their very, very first, but um, they had a PLC 1, PLC 2, PLC 3. But the PLC-5, you'll find this, although this was made many, many years ago, you'll find this in just about every plant. There'll be a, at least one PLC-5, probably several slip 500s, and a couple micrologics, depending on how much they use Alan Brad. I'm going to set this down. <coughs> this is steel, it's heavy. And when they designed the hardware system for it, they designed it on an octal-type address. They, they don't use eights and nines in the numbering system. <laughs> when they develop the Slick 500, like the ones you've got on your desk here, then they uh, they figured out, hey, that's difficult for humans to work with an optical system. Let's go to a decimal system. We'll go over basic ladder logic usage instructions, most common ones, as I mentioned before. Your equipment's programming conventions. 
once again, we'll be talking about industry, the most common programming conventions in industry and, and terminology. Uh, like SOL, anybody here know what SOL stands for? There you go. There you go. Well, actually, <laughs> common <laughs> industry naming convention, SOL is cylinder. It's a three letter acronym for cylinder. So other ones like AFI, which you probably haven't heard of unless you've had one of the classes before, but we'll let you know about it later on. I'll have a slide. Then we'll uh, view programs online and offline. With uh, programming online and offline, I'd like to introduce you to that concept is that when you're online with it, that means you're physically connected to the PLC. Your laptop is connected via a wire to the PLC, and you're changing the program inside the PLC. And that's called online programming. And offline programming, you cannot even have a PLC here. You could be back in the hotel room changing the program. And later, you'll come and connect to the PLC and download the program into the PLC. That's called offline program. It's important that you understand it because we found that most of the uh, causes of downtime are due to lack of communication. It's not communication between the PLC and the laptop. It's communication between John and Jack or Joe or <laughs> two people. We'll talk a little bit about WinZip, file management, um, downloading and e -clones. These are just managing your PLC equipment within your facility. Um, there are specific ways to build reliability in there. Like I mentioned, if you don't have backup copies, WinZip is a very common file compression software that's used worldwide. Um, file management storing programs on your computer in a logical place where you and all of your fellow employees can find that program quickly. It's all about minimizing downtime. And double EPROMs, so I'll give you some tips, show you a way that in certain circumstances you can utilize an EPROM, double EPROM, which is a little bitty backup memory chip, to have zero downtime. The very first one that we're pointing out here, we're using as an example of all the different ways you can use software to do the exact same function, is saving a program. It's something as simple as saving a program. Uh, here in Microsoft Word or Excel document, it's very common habit when you're ready to save the program, you can click on the icon that's a uh, disc up here, a picture of a floppy disk.